on the River City since a van charged a voter registration tent over the weekend. I'm Don Lopez. And I'm Phil Amato. Action News Jacks first showed you the aftermath Saturday. That event was organized by Republicans from our area in a parking lot in East Arlington. Action News Jacks Bridget Matter is live this noon. Bridget, the mayor believes this was politically motivated. And Phil, over the weekend, we got a redacted police report from JSO. It says nothing about what the suspect said to the volunteers or to police after this happened. On Saturday, police say 27-year-old Gregory Tim drove into a voter registration tent off Atlantic Boulevard. This is video of Tim appearing in court, even nodding to our cameras. In social media pages that appear to belong to Tim, there was no political post that we found. Tim is not registered to vote in Florida and has no criminal history here in Duval County. These are pictures of the aftermath of the crash that happened. We asked the chairman of the Republican Party of Duval County if Tim said anything to volunteers. He said no, only that he took out his cell phone, took video of it, before giving an obscene gesture. Now, Mayor Lenny Curry also spoke here today. He said he was shocked to hear what happened. There's an ongoing investigation, uh, and so I, I'm not aware of what was redacted. Um, uh, frankly, at this stage, I wouldn't ask the sheriff that. But what's clear is um, this individual drove up to a tent that was clearly registering voters with Donald Trump's name and, and attire around them and drove a vehicle at volunteers. And we asked to speak to those volunteers that were victims of this, but they say they're too shaken up to talk to us right now. We also are looking into the suspect's past to see if we can find anything that would indicate why he did this. I have reached out to his father on social media over the weekend, but have not heard back from him. For now, reporting live on the South Side, Bridget Matter, CBS 47, Action News Jax. Breaking news right now, Action News Jax has a crew headed to a reported shooting in the southwest part of Jacksonville. We just got word about 10 minutes ago, someone was shot around I-295 and Roosevelt Boulevard near the Orange Park Mall. Now, police tell us they'll hold a briefing at 1215. As soon as we get more information, of course, we'll let you know. Former public defender Matt Shirk violated Florida's code of ethics and has agreed to be publicly censured. Action News Jack's Paige Kelton has covered the controversy surrounding Shirk for years. She's in the newsroom now. And Paige, this is just one of many investigations. It is, as you know, Phil. Matt Shirk was ousted from office back in 2016. Since then, and even during his tenure, he's been the focus of a half dozen investigations. On Friday, the disgraced former public defender agreed to a settlement where he admitted to several ethics violations. The Florida Commission on Ethics tells me Shirk violated the code of ethics and will be publicly censured. He'll also be fined $6,000. The punishment now goes on to Governor Ron DeSantis. Shirk's troubled tenure as public defender included accusations of drinking on the job, hiring unqualified women, and even propositioning them for sex. Shirk was never criminally charged, but is still the focus of several Florida bar and state investigations into possible misuse of taxpayer money and sunshine violations. In the newsroom, Paige Kelton, CBS 47, Fox 30, Action News Jax. New this noon, in just the last hour, a special committee dedicated to investigating JEA announced how it plans to get to the bottom of the failed sale. Action News Jack's Courtney Cole joins us live right now with new developments. Courtney, today the group focused on the best ways to move forward transparently and supposedly also thoroughly. And for that special investigative committee, that means asking every city council member to disclose any kind of meeting or interaction about the potential sale of JEA because they say even during this investigation, this is about gaining back public trust and letting them know that here at City Hall, city council members don't have anything to hide. Now, here's a big thing on their to do list moving forward. The special investigative committee has. 84 documents that they're wanting to request that's going to be vital to this investigation into JEA's failed sale. That includes senior leadership trips, communications between law firms and ad agencies, Mayor Curry, his staff, and JEA employees. They're also looking for any kind of hard drives from JEA, any laptops that were issued, and any JEA related items like cell phones, computers, and tablets. But the chair, Councilman Roy Diamond, says he knows that even requesting all those things won't completely fulfill what they're looking for in terms of what happened at JEA. So they're also talking about creating a whistleblower hotline so that employees can alert them to anything else they might know.
I understand JEA employees are kind of afraid to speak out, and it's part of our job as a committee to make them less afraid, to give them safe space to come out and tell the truth. Now, the Special Investigative Committee is aware that 84 documents is a lot and that it could take a while for those documents to be filled. So next on Action News, Jax at 5, we're talking about the other step they're planning to take to gain more for their investigation while they wait for that. And we also spoke to a union rep. He talks to us about how all of this is affecting employees. Reporting live at downtown Jacksonville, Courtney Cole, CBS 47, Action News Jax. Just into the Action News Jax newsroom, a five car crash is blocking traffic in Orange Park right now. In the last 15 minutes, Clay County Fire Rescue said that crash happened on Blanding Boulevard near Wells Road and the Orange Park Mall. Action News Jax has reached out to learn about any injuries and what caused that crash. Of course, we'll update you as soon as we learn more. An investigation will continue today at the Ponte Vedra home where deputies say two teens were found dead in what is being called now a homicide suicide. Action News Jax has been updating you on this story since we first aired it on Sunday. Investigators plan to be at the home gathering evidence throughout the day. Well, it's a huge mystery still that continues to haunt us, but it's been 15 years since two local boys were last seen by their families and this community. Mark Degner and Brian Hayes, here are their pictures, were 12 and 13 years old when they disappeared in 2005. Action News Jax told you yesterday when these new photos were unveiled, the boys were last seen walking away from Paxson Middle School on the west side. Both families say that they had medical conditions that would require daily medications. And again, they haven't been seen since. Right now, there's a search for this local man who investigators say cut off his ankle monitor. Here's a look at him on your screen here. Police say Lynn Frolic, who was on probation, cut off his ankle monitor Saturday and took off. His last known location was around Pulaski Road and 295. If you know where he could be, you're asked to call JSO. This is new video of the two people charged in the triple shooting that killed a local mom and another man facing a judge just in the last hour. Action News Jax first showed you Taylor Hill and Victoria Shifo in January. The pair are linked to the deaths of Lisa Dukes, Liza Dukes and James Wooten. Action News Jack's Beth Russo joins us live at the Clay County Courthouse right now. And Beth, Hill just learned he's facing the death penalty for that shooting. And the family of Liza Dukes just learned that as well. Her sister and several other loved ones were up in the courtroom with us this morning for Taylor Hill and Victoria Shifo's hearing. Right now, I want to go ahead and give you a good look at the pair making their plea. You can see Hill, who's facing murder charges and now the death penalty, walking in with a cane, wearing a back brace, and clearly scanning the crowd for someone. He and Shifo both pleaded not guilty to all charges against them in connection to the deadly shooting. I want to go ahead and take you back to January 1st in Keystone Heights. That's when Action News Jax first showed you the home on Lori Loop Road. Deputies tell us that's where the pair was living when an argument broke out over stolen belongings. They say that's when Hill shot and killed mom of three, Liza Dukes and James Wooten, and also injured Wooten's son. We dug through court records which show police were already looking for Hill when this shooting happened because he cut off his ankle monitor and left it on the side of the road in December 2019. I was able to talk with Liza Duke's sister. She and the other loved ones were too emotional to make a comment on camera. However, they're making sure their message about what happened to the local mom of three is very clear. I'll tell you the steps that they're taking coming up all new on Action News Jax at 5. We're live in Clay County this afternoon. Beth Russo, Action News Jax. Hundreds of Americans are quarantined here in the U.S. as the number of coronavirus outbreaks grow. Right now, there are more than 40,000 cases and more than 900 people have died worldwide, mostly in China. There are 12 confirmed cases in the U.S. Meanwhile, passengers on board a quarantine cruise ship are facing some bad news this noon. At least 65 new cases of the Wuhan coronavirus have been found on the Diamond Princess, currently docked in Yokohama, Japan. That brings the total number of infections on board to 135. Current flu season is on track to be one of the year's worst. So, so far, at least 12,000 people have died, 78 of them being just children. 22 million people have gotten sick. Flu season usually runs through April and sometimes through May. And take a look at the map here of the United States that tracks flu activity in all 50 states. And here's a color chart, as you can see here, minimal in green, low, moderate, starting to get yellow, and then orange and red 
for high. So mostly all green in October, and then you can see progressively it gets worse through the beginning of the year. Now, Florida isn't as bad as the rest of the, of the country, but flu activity here is still pretty high. Idaho is the only state with minimal flu activity. Flu shots are recommended for everyone six months old and older, and especially the very young and the elderly. Florida Blue is teaming up with Walgreens to offer free flu shots at its Florida Blue Center statewide. This offer, we're told, is good through Thursday from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. to anyone 18 and older. It takes about two weeks for that vaccine to have an effect, Phil. Well, the Backstreet Boys will be back in Jacksonville. You're getting a live look at the Vistar Veterans Memorial Arena, where the boy band, now more of a middle aged band, is bringing their world tour to town. Ooh. Tickets go on sale Valentine's Day. That concert is set for September. September 25th. You can go to Action News Jax for more information. Ooh, the shade, Phil. <laughs> Where are my sunglasses? The, the shade. <laughs> In St. Augustine, Publix is now hosting a job fair. It's at the store at Anastasia Plaza and will be there until 5 p.m. The store is looking for seasonal employees who can work this spring. You can start your applications online ahead of time, we're told. And we posted a link online under the action button at actionnewsjax.com. And good afternoon to you. I'm first alert meteorologist Gary Beatonball warming up into the upper 70s already in Jacksonville. How high we get this afternoon and near record highs for days in a row. I'm timing that out coming up in your Action News Jacks. First alert, 7 day forecast. Oh, and a former Jags player takes home an Oscar coming up. What he says inspired him to make a movie about a young girl's curly unruly sometimes hair. And there's a new push on Capitol Hill from Senate leaders. The steps they're taking against some witnesses in the president's impeachment trial. What to watch tonight brought to you by Ashley Home Store.
Well, a top Democrat is calling on the nation's inspectors general to make sure government whistleblowers are protected this noon. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer sent a letter today asking that every agency inspector general investigate retaliation against whistleblowers who report presidential misconduct. Winning finishes a lot of sentences. Victory is the ultimate statement. So nobody needed to, if, if he wanted to quote clean house of the testifiers, he could have done that uh, quite a while ago. The move comes after President Trump ousted key government officials in the impeachment probe, particularly Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vidman from the National Security Council. Well, I have to grab tissue again because I'm so excited about this former Jacksonville Jaguar celebrating his first Oscar award. Matthew Cherry took home the award for this year's best animated short film, a tearjerker called Hair Love. Now, part all your hair into sections, clip it away. This is a six minute short that centers around an African American father who has to learn how to do his little girl's hair for the first time, being coached by his wife who's suffering an illness and she's lost her hair. Cherry says that he was inspired to create this film to normalize black hair. There's a very important issue that's out there, it's the Crown Act, and if we can help to get this passed in all 50 states, it will help stories like DeAndre Arnold's. And the Crown Act is a law that would ban discrimination based on hairstyles associated with race. And so far, only New York, New Jersey, and California have signed this into law. Cherry, by the way, is the second athlete to ever win an Oscar. The first was Kobe Bryant, who took home the same award two years ago. And Cherry dedicated his Oscar to the late NBA star who died last month in a helicopter crash. In the meantime, the NFL celebrating another first, an African-American female coach. Former Charlotte Panthers head coach Ron Rivera hired Jennifer King as a full-time assistant coach. She's the fourth woman to hold that position in the league. King served as an intern under Rivera with the Carolina Panthers for four months before the 2017 season. The Solar Orbiter is now on a 10-year voyage to capture new images of the sun. NASA and the European Space Agency launched the probe atop an Atlas V rocket last night. The orbiter is expected to capture images of the sun's poles, which will hopefully help researchers examine how solar winds affect Earth. Action News Jax is proud to announce the River City United Foundation raising more than $100,000 for local charities. Now, these are new pictures from the River City Ball oh. held Saturday. Do you know that guy look dressed that. all schnappy? Look at that dapper guy there. Oh, look at him there, along with some other Action News Jax faces. Action News Jax first alert meteorologist Garrett Beatenbaugh served as the MC. The proceeds are going to support local children in the city through the Tiger Academy. Community Peds Care and Angels for Allison and Mackenzie Noel Wilson Foundations. Now, certified Jacksonville's most accurate forecast Action News Jack's first alert weather. Great event. Thanks for all of you who sponsored that as well. St. Augustine Beach live here on the Action News Jacks First Alert Skycam Network showing overcast skies here at times, but also some, some sunshine breaking through. And it's a pretty nice day at the beaches. I mean, it's nice temperatures here. We've got 66 degrees right along the beaches there and right over the water. Now, inland, we're much warmer. In the upper 70s, to near 80 degrees in some spots. 78 right now at JIA. We're at 74 in Mayport at noon. Mid 70s in Stark and mid 70s for you at Keystone Heights and the 70s in Southeast Georgia as well. Here's first alert Doppler HD over Northeast Florida and Southeast Georgia. Pretty dry. We told you to be dry today, right? And here is the satellite and radar. Visible satellite taking a picture down from space. You can see some of those clouds here passing by. Some more cloud cover pushing in from northwest to south and east as we head through this afternoon. But all in all, high pressure is controlling our forecast here today. Uh, system that's dumping a lot of rain to our north and west is going to stay up there. We're going to have these onshore winds at the surface here for us around 5 to 15 miles per hour. Here's the hour by hour forecast. There goes those clouds moving off to the south and east. We'll see some more high clouds push in later on today and it will be mostly cloudy by tonight. Here's the hour by hour temperature forecast generally in the upper 70s to low 80s. We'll likely see some low 80s here before it's all said and done inland. Back in the low 70s by 3 to 4 o'clock at the coast. 
Upper 60s, Fernandina Beach by 5 o'clock, and then we go back into the 60s here gradually for Jacksonville as well. Near record warmth, the record 82 today, forecasting 81 now, and then 82 tomorrow, the record 84 from 1939, and then Wednesday, 82 degrees, the record 84 once again, but from just last year, so it was a warm uh, day last year this, uh, on Wednesday's date. All right, so here we go. Pollen season's going strong. We got the oak pollen spreading to the north, about State Road 16 or so. Pine pollen still out in full force, and it's going to be dry today, tomorrow into Wednesday. Partly cloudy skies, but not much pollen to wash off your cars. There, not much rain to wash off your cars. Then we got Thursday bringing some afternoon and evening, especially showers with our next cold front. Something we'll be watching for you and timing out each day here over the next three to four days. Here's your Action News Jack's first alert 7 day forecast with your weekend always in view. Low 80s uh, through Thursday. Then we cool down into the 60s with those clouds and even some showers early in the day through the early afternoon. We dry out for your nighttime uh, Valentine's plans. Uh, and back into the 50s, so a little bit cooler for Valentine's Day. And then, of course, the weekend is always in view. We're back to the 70s and mainly dry. You can always get this forecast any time of the day right there on the Action News Jack's First Alert Weather app. And join Chief Meteorologist Mike Burrish at 5 on CBS 47 at Fox 30. Love is in the air this week, but how much is it going to cost you? We're going to show you how much millennials are expected to drop on their sweethearts this week. And imagine if you could bottle up that love, or maybe even stick in, in a can. How Coca-Cola is making that happen just in time for Valentine's Day. New this noon, millennials are ready to break the bank to impress their sweetheart this Valentine's. According to bank rate, the average millennial will spend about $208 for their boo thing. That's compared to baby boomers, Phil, who only spend about a hundred bucks. What? All right, well, it was a discount. We eat earlier, I guess. Well, if uh, love is in the air, then Coca-Cola might have a flavor for it. The company is releasing a new cherry and vanilla edition just in time for Valentine's Day. Coca-Cola says the inspiration for its new flavor comes from you, the fans.
They call it beauty salon syndrome. It sends hundreds of thousands of American women to the hospital every year. But when they mentioned the word stroke, that really scared me a lot. What you can do to limit your chances of a deadly medical condition the next time you go to the hair salon. That's today at 545 on CBS 47 and Fox 30. All right, enjoy lunch outside. Huh? Nice and mild. Mm -hmm. 70s and 80s this afternoon with partly sunny skies. The 80s continue the next couple days. All right, looking good. Nice temperatures. Have a great day, everyone. The Young and the Restless is on next. Have a wonderful day. See you back here tomorrow.